بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الغل يا من يطعم الغل صحيح بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد النبي الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين وعلى آله وصحابته والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قال النظم نفعنا الله ببركاته والغل يا من يبتغي بيانه أن يربط القلب على خيانه أو غدر أو خديعات والشد ولذلك الرباط هو الحقد أحسن إليه تقنط العيد الكل مغفرة وعيدة في الخدر لسائر الجمع مرتين بيومي الخميس والإذنين الفخر من جملة ذي الخلال وهو تمدحك بالخصال وطودها الشميخ عن الكبر حقره إن أردت أن أخر بعلم ربك ونفسك فمن عرف ذين يتواضع ويهن مقامه ينفي مقام الشكر كما التواضع له يشري والذل والضعة جنب واحذره واكبر على الغني والمستكبر نعم الغل يا من يبتغي بيانه الغل يا من يطلب بيانه أن يربط القلب على خيانه أن يربط الإنسان قلبه على خيانة لآخر أو غدر أو خديعة هذه أنواع الغل والشد لذلك الرباط يشتد ذلك الرباط جدا ذلك يقال له الحقد فالحقد أخص من الغل So uh, all praise is due to Allah may his peace and blessings be upon the prophet of the prophets Allah. and the seal of the messengers uh, uh, Muhammad uh, and his family and companions and their followers until the day of judgment. Glory be to you, O Allah, we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing and the all-wise. We reached the chapter about uh, rancor, which is a feeling, uh, a, 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 and the author says, rancor, O you, who is, is asking to its clarification, uh, is when the heart is uh, intent upon betraying the person or uh, uh, that, that you have it towards. It's a feeling of, of, of evil towards another person that you want to betray the person and you want to hurt them, uh, 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 bound to treachery, betrayal, or some trickery. Uh, and the uh, 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 knot that is binding it to the heart is a malice. Uh, malice is, is a more, uh, uh, is, is, is a general term. And malice is a specific uh, and more uh, extreme type of, of, uh, of uh, rancor. What is the outcome of this rancor? This Allah says the evil plotting does not uh, harm except the people who, who have it. 
وفي الحديث من حفر حفرة لأخيه وقع فيها. And the hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whosoever digs a hole for his brother to fall in, he, fall, he falls in it. وقال إمامنا الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى يا حفر الحفر حف أعمق ما استطعت فكم من حافر طاح في الحفر الذي حفر يا حافر الحفر عمق ما استطعت فكم من حافر طاح في الحفر الذي حفر يعني ما الشافعي said in a poem, he said, oh, digger of uh, uh, holes, <laughs> make it deeper. He said, make it deeper. Because how many people who have dug holes for their brothers, them, uh, how many have we seen of them, have, have, have fallen in those holes that they have dug for <laughs> this is the This is the situation of the politicians today. They, the only uh, action that they do, they're always just plotting and, and, and digging holes for everyone around them. But they're the ones who are falling into them day by day. أحسن إليه أحسن أحسن إليه. So if you feel ill will towards others, and we have mentioned what this ill will is, that you want to hurt this person, you want to betray them, you want to trick them, you want to hurt them in some kind of way, and the thing that is 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 holding this together uh, is is uh, the the glue, you if you will, is is this malice that you feel in your heart. Uh, the, if this is the disease. As far as the cure is to show kindness to the person instead. Once you show kindness to this person, then the shaytan loses hope. إلا عبدا بينه وبين أخيه شحناء فيقال تركوا هذين حتى يفيء حتى يرجع عنهما. So uh, he said also keep in mind the hadith that was promised uh, uh, for uh, Mondays and Thursdays that was narrated the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. أعمال الناس في كل جمعة مرة في كل أسبوع مرة. That every week uh, that uh, the actions of the sons of Adam will be showed displayed in front of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Twice a week, on Monday and on Thursday, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would forgive everyone after seeing their book of deeds, except a person that in that book is a person who who <laughs> held in his heart two people that, that between them was was some uh, dispute that they kept going. <laughs> And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell, tell the angels, leave these two, as in they're not going to receive the forgiveness until they settle their dispute. وفي الثانية قال يطلع عليكم رجل من أهل الجنة فطلع نفس الرجل وفي الثالثة طلع بنفسه فعجب من ذلك عبد الله بن عمرو بن عاص قال هذا شيء عجيب لا ندري ما أنا لا بد أن أن أختبر هذا الرجل لا بد أن أختبر هذا الرجل فذهب قال أنا وقعت بيني وبين أبي شحناء يعني أمر ومنع مثل كما وهو حيل فقط يريد أن يختبر هذا الرجل فذهب معه وجلس معه ثلاث ليالي يراقبه ولا يزيد على انه عندما يستيقظ يقول لا اله الا الله وكل ما يدخل وقت الصلاة الفرض يتوضا ويصلي لا يزيد على ذلك فلما كانت الليلة الثانية كاد عبد الله بن عمرو ان يستهزئ به ان يستنقصه فاراد ان يخرج قال انا ما وقع بيني وبين ابي شيء الا اني رايت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث مرات قال يطلب عليك فرج من الجنة فإذا أنت تطلع كنت أريد أن أعمل أن أعرف ما هو العمل قال على نفسه 
لا ما عندي عمل غير هذا اللي رأيت لكنني ما بدت ليلة وفي قلبي شيء لمسلم. So uh, Abdullah uh, ibn Amr ibn al-As was with the Prophet ﷺ one, uh, one day and then a man came in and before the man came in the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, there will soon enter upon you and there will now enter upon you a man from the people of Jannah. So then this man came inside. The next day the Prophet ﷺ said there will now he enter upon you. Oh, in the same gathering. Uh, then the man came in uh, then the, the Prophet ﷺ said again and now a man from Jannah will enter upon you. The same man came in. And the third time, the Prophet ﷺ said, A man from the people of Jannah will enter upon you. Then the same man came in. So then Abdullah ibn Abdul al-As, he was, he was very amazed. So he said, I have to find out what this guy is doing. For the Prophet ﷺ to say, he's from the people of Jannah. So he went up to him and he made up a story. He said that, you know, me and my father, we had a dispute. And I can't stay in the same house with him right now. Uh, and uh, I, if you could please host me for just a few days. So he stayed with the man for, for three days uh, and nights. And he spent that time with him and he was just monitoring what is this guy doing that's so special. So then uh, he sees that the man, basically he's just doing eh, what everybody does every day. And then he's not doing any kinds of worship except that he noticed that when he's uh, uh, turning over, when he's sleeping, he says, La ilaha illallah. And then once, he, uh, once the prayer comes in, he makes wudu and he prays and so on. No, nothing extra at all. So then uh, Abdullah ibn Amr, he began to feel that the, what this guy is doing is not that much, it's not that great. So then he asked him after the three days passed, he said that, you know, uh, to be honest with you, uh, I did not have a dispute with my father, I just made that up because the Prophet Sallallahu said that a man from the people of Jannah will enter upon you <laughs> three times. Uh, three times and you are the one who entered. He said, so I wanted to see what action you're doing that's so special. So he said, uh, it, truly, I do not do any extra worship beyond what you saw. I don't do anything extra. Except that I do not spend a single night, I do not fall asleep one night while I have any ill will, any malice in my heart against any Muslim. So Abdullah ibn Abdul al he said that is, he said that is what we are not able to do. That is the thing that we are not able to do. وَذَرَّتُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِ الْقَلْبِ الْعَلِي مِثْلُ الرِّضَى وَالزُّهْدِ وَالتَّوَكُّلِ أَفْضَلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ أَجْبَالِهِ شَمَخْنَا مِنْ ضَوَاهِرِ الْأَعْمَالِ ذَرَّ مِنْ عَمَلِ الْقَلْبِ الْعَلِي مِنْ هَذَا اللي كان يكره أصحاب الرضا والزهد هذا لا يطلب عليه لا رب العالمين هذا عمل خفي خفي جدا ذرة من عمل القلب العلي مثل الرضا والزهد والتوكل أفضل عند الله من أجبال شمخنا من ظواهرنا. نص المطهر. In this book that we are reading later on it mentions that one grain, one atom of an action that is done from the elevated heart, from the purified heart such as the actions of pleasure with Allah's decree, like truly in your heart, the action of being pleased with Allah's decree. Uh, and being pleased with what Allah decreed, these are examples of those actions of the heart. And, and, uh, and asceticism, removing yourself from the desires of this world, and, uh, and uh, reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly in your heart, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are actions that only Allah can see. One grain of these actions is better than <laughs> great, <laughs> mountains, great mountains of good deeds that are done by the, by the limbs. أحسن إليه تقنط العيد اذكره موهرة واريدة خبيثة والفخر من شبلته الخلال الفخر وهو مرض من أمراض القلوب مرض كثير من الناس من شبلته هذه الأمراض وهو ما هو تمدحك بالخصال أنا فلان بفلان العالم العلام الدكتور خير هذه مصيبة هذه مصيبة and then boastfulness, uh, or uh, uh, boasting and er combined with arrogance. Uh, it's pride, the word, it, it means pride, but it's the kind of pride that you're boasting about it and showing off. Uh, uh, about, it's not showing off in terms of uh, good deeds, but this is showing off about you know, your accomplishments, that you're saying, I'm doctor so-and-so, and putting that uh, before your name and making sure you're introducing yourself, you know, I'm doctor this and that. 
and, and making and an imam. or I am imam or sheikh this and and so and so. I, yeah I have a degree from such and such place I am the great scholar such and such <laughs> هذه المصيبة أصاب الله بها بن دائما ابن فلان ابن فلان هذا عيب عليك لئن فخرت بآباء ذوي نسب قلنا صدقت ولكن بيس ما خلق ولكن بيس ما خلق هذا صحيح and if somebody is praising about you know oh you know these are my ancestors and so on someone is proud of their and this is my father and this is my grandfather and look at their accomplishments and look at their names and so on then yes, you're right. These are your ancestors, but what a sad person that they left behind that is a boastful, you know, an arrogant uh, a grandchild. Allah Ta'ala qala فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Allah says, and do not praise yourselves. He is the one who knows best. Those who have true piety. One is a أحسن إخفاء العمل واحد كمل يا أبي بكر وأولئك الناس فإذا تحدثوا بنعم الله فلهم مقام ولكن الضعيف أحسن له إخفاء عمله. One person who is uh, who is weak. واحد مني ضعيف أحسن يت يت يتجرأ على الله. It's better don't don't be prideful uh, over other people. Uh, somebody who is strong like Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه عمر رضي الله عنهم then the, there may be some benefit sometimes, uh, you know, and there's maybe a place to, to, to mention the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. But for us who are weak, you know, keep your actions to yourself. طود من أطواد أمراض القلوب شامخ ذابت طالع مرتفع جدا يعني حقره هذا مرض كبر مرض خطير وهو جبل من أمراض القلوب طويل جدا. And uh, this arrogance uh, is a mountain. It's a great wave, a crashing, a great crashing wave of uh, of the diseases of the heart. وهو من المهلكات. And it's from the destroyers. ومعناه تعاظم الإنسان في نفسه وتحقيره لغيره. تعاظم الإنسان بين يتعاظم الإنسان في نفسه تعاظم الإنسان في نفسه وتحقيره لغيره. And this is a person. Uh, uh, this arrogance is a feeling of greatness of one's self and a feeling of belittlement of uh, combined with belittlement of other people. نعم وله أسباب. And it has uh, certain causes. فمنها العلم والعبادة والحسد. العلم العبادة الحسد. والحسب حسب ما يعد من مفاخر الآباء نسب الرابع له أسباب العلم والعبادة والنسب and some of the causes of this arrogance is knowledge and great worship and and uh, and, and, and noble lineage والشجاعة والقوة والجمال والمال and and uh, bravery and strength and beauty and wealth وهو يعني الكبر درجات وطبقات الكبر درجات بعضه فوق بعضه. and arrogance has levels that certain ones are over the other ones. وأشدها التكبر على الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. the greatest one is to feel above Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. والذي حمل أكثر الكفار على الكفر. and this is what has caused most this is what caused most disbelievers to disbelieve. ثم التكبر على أهل الدين من العلماء والصالحين. Then to feel better and, and, and above the, the people of the deen and the righteous scholars. The, the, the scholars and the righteous. Uh, uh, that, uh, that you feel that you are too smart or too uh, uh, good to listen to what they're saying and what they're advising. And then uh, the arrogance over other people. وهو عظم العيوب. and this is uh, the greatest of flaws that a person has. لقدحه في الدين والاعتقاد. because of the the damage that it causes in one's deen and one's belief. وربما جرى إلى الكفر. and it uh, it often leads to to disbelief. فانظر ما وقع لي بليس. 
فانظر ماذا وقع لي Look at what happened to Iblis قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طين He said I'm better than him You created me from fire and you created him from clay وأخطر شيء وأفضعه الآية الشريفة الله تعالى يقول سأصرف عن آياتي الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق وإن يرى كل آية لا يؤمن بها وإن يرى سبيل الرشد لا يتخذه سبيلا وإن يرى سبيل الغي يتخذه سبيلا سأصرف عن آية لا يجعل لهم أي علامة تدلهم على الخير الله سبحانه وتعالى says I will turn away my signs meaning I will not leave for them any sign that will lead them to goodness from who, from who? those who are arrogant and, arrogant and boastful in the earth without any right uh, Allah says and if they see every sign and if they see every sign they will not believe in it and if they see the path of guidance they will not take it and if they see the path of misguidance uh, uh, they will take it as their path and, uh, and, and from, sorry if they see the path of loss they will take it as their loss and, uh, or the path of hellfire and, uh, and one of the signs of arrogance is lack of justice and feeling too good to give others their rights and belittling others. Uh, belittling others, uh, uh, feeling better than the, the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following one's desires. Now, and what is the cure for this arrogance? is to know yourself and know your Lord. Know your Lord and His greatness and know yourself and how lowly you are. Whoever knows, truly knows himself, then he has known his Lord. Then if a person understands these two truly, then they will be uh, cured of this because the, a person who understands Allah truly and understands his, that his majesty and greatness and arrogance only belongs to him. Allah is the only right to be arrogant, to, to be above everyone and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, uh, better than everyone. Uh, and then uh, uh, if one knows themselves and their lowliness and how insignificant they are, then they will understand where the place of arrogance. ما قاموا هنا فما قام الشكر كما التواضع له يجل ما قامه عكس الشكر عاكس للشكر ما قام الكبر ينفي ما قام الشكر فمن تكبر لا يشكر مطلقا The arrogance is directly opposing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, st the state of arrogance, the disease of arrogance if somebody is there, then there is no way that they will achieve the state of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as far as hum the opposite, as far as humility, the opposite of arrogance, it leads one to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لذلك قال والذل وضعت جنة لا تذل نفسك لمخلوق ولا تكون متضعا لمخلوق بلا سبب. And there's a difference between humility and humiliation. Do not, uh, he said, leave humiliation. Do not humiliate yourself. Do not uh, uh, make yourself seem insignificant to any uh, any creature. Don't don't belittle yourself. وكبر على الغني والمستكبر. And in fact. For the person who is rich and the, uh, the person who is arrogant, you should make yourself, uh, you should hold yourself strongly in front of such people. Uh, do that externally. 
as in externally, if a person is, is, is arrogant or a person is, is, is wealthy, yeah. don't, don't show them any sign that you're appreciating or wow, look at this person. No, show them, treat them like it's as if you do not even notice any of their arrogance, any of their, uh, uh, you know, uh, don't, don't care about it. Treat them normally. Uh, uh, treat him as if you don't even see these things. But in yourself, you don't feel you're better in yourself, you, you belittle yourself. And, and your intention by that a strength is only to, uh, to cure the person and not to increase their disease. And the person who is not able to do that, then he should you know, uh, uh, refrain. And that is why it is mentioned that the, that the uh, being a uh, uh, strong or arrogant towards an arrogant person this is a sadaqa because you're you you want to cure that person but if, if the intention is of course to cure that person uh, in the hadith it is mentioned that if you see the people who are humble then be humble towards them and if you see the people who are arrogant, then be arrogant towards them because that is uh, uh, something that will humble them and will, uh, will bring them down to their level. But the way that it, it works right now is that once we see the people who are, uh, who are rich and, and, and are arrogant, then we belittle ourselves for them. And when we see the people who are uh, uh, who are humble, uh, we take advantage of them and 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 make a service them. This is the opposite. And it is mentioned in the hadith that whosoever <coughs> humbles themselves for a rich person, be just because of their richness, then then uh, then two thirds of their deen goes away. So don't belittle yourself, don't humble yourself to the rich people because of their uh, wealth. And uh, but this doesn't mean that don't give a person the right just because they're a rich person. It means if, 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 it's a very great thing to be a rich person and to be humble and to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that person, you know, give them their respect. The, uh, uh, to everybody, we, uh, you give their respect. Well, can, uh, uh, yeah, if you see a rich person who is, who is humble, then this person has, has two praiseworthy things. Uh, th then, uh, uh, then, uh, 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 you have to give them the credit for, for what they have, but if you see a rich person who's foolish and boastful, then 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 don't. لكن لا لا ينبغي للإنسان أن يفكر عن هذا لا ينبغي فكرها تذم حقيقة والرجوع إليه ويتحرص حتى لا يلمه أحد هذا مرض هذا مرض حقيقة. So the next disease mentioned is displeasure with blame that you don't like being blamed. And من طبيعة الإنسان يكره الذم هذا حقيقة. From a from the human nature. Is to not like to be criticized or blamed, 
But then there's a, 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 it reaches a point where people are unable to accept any blame or criticism, and this is a blameworthy, and this is a disease in itself. <laughs> Loving praise and hating to be, uh, uh, basically doing, uh, it would lead you to doing things that uh, you love praise, you want to be praised, and st uh, staying away from things just because you don't want to be blamed, this is a disease of the heart. <laughs> People, uh, you know, uh, are, uh, love this uh, disease. It, 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 it appeals. It's a very appealing disease of the heart. So once it reaches a level where you are mindful of others when it comes to do your deeds, that you're watching what others say, that you're that it leads you even to the point of staying away from certain good things because of the, the, these things, fear, seeking praise or fearing uh, yeah, thing, uh, or, or, uh, or 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 it leads you to doing bad things because you're you're being mindful of the people. This awareness of the people is a is a barrier between you and achieving ihsan, which is the complete mindfulness of Allah. If you want to break that barrier, then you have to realize uh, that, uh, and you want to pierce through that barrier so you can become complete, reach the level of Ihsan and become aware of Allah. Then you have to realize that there is no one who can benefit, and there is no benefit, and there is no harm, except by the King of Kings, uh, praised and exalted is He. So, so there's different stages of this, and uh, and they're all you know blameworthy. But the one that is haram, that is forbidden, is that this consciousness of people will lead you towards doing something bad or keeping you away from something good. Then it is for haram to have this fear of people. <laughs> So the true mindfulness, uh, to re the true truthfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highest level of sidq is to be uh, at a stage where it completely doesn't matter to you whether people are praise you or people will put you down. The, uh, you, your only awareness is focused upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا بد أن تعلم هذا أن هذا من الله تعالى سواء كان ذما أو مدح حقيقة الله تعالى قال والله خلقكم وما تعملون هذه أعمال العباد باب خلق أفعال العباد. And even the people's actions you realize those are from Allah سبحانه وتعالى that Allah said and Allah created you and that which you do so you're not even ascribing their actions to them. كراهة الموت بحيث ينفر منه وينه إلى ما يذكر. So 
هل يفر منه ويأنف يمس استكبار عندما يذكر اسم الموت حتى كأنه عندما يقال كل نفس نائقة الموت كل من عليها فان ينفر هذه معدودة من جملة الأمراض And the next disease is hatred of death. That a person, uh, you know, even becomes, you know, uh, upset when they hear the mention of death. Uh, it reaches to that level. That uh, uh, and it becomes annoyed or, or it disturbs him once death is mentioned. Even when the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, every soul shall taste death, he's like, uh, it just, it, it disturbs the person. This is one of the diseases of the heart. <laughs> And this happens to many of the, the sons of Adam. And in the hadith, says, So uh, and now it's... Um, mentions that this disease of the heart, uh, uh, what happens with it, uh, 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 the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, increase in the remembrance, increase in your gatherings, the remembrance of the destroyer of pleasures. Mm. The, the destroyer of pleasures, death is going to come. Why? Because once you're, uh, it, 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 either you're going to be in a state where you're happy and things are fine and so on, then what it does, th then, then you're open, you're focused on so many things and you're distracted by so many things, then it narrows the focus in to your, uh, remembering your akhirah. And if you're in such a bad situation where you only see the pain and the torment and the struggle and so on, then it increases your focus to see, now you see that, that, that there, this, will be, this will go away and you will have a hereafter and so on, and these things are only temporary. <laughs> And sadly, uh, even this occurs. <laughs> <when> <laughs> this this, uh, this uh, uh, sadly, this mentality is even had by older people, who once death is mentioned, they're like, no, no, let us enjoy what not. This is not the time for it right now. Wait, and we'll get older. We'll talk about this. We'll worry about this. They don't even want to think about it, they don't even want to hear it mentioned. That uh, uh, the, 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 the problem nowadays is the mentality of retirement. That people say, okay, I'm going to work hard for so many years, and then once I'm old now, I'm going to, these are the days of tourism and I'm going to school and and my children got their degrees and so on, now I can go and relax and I can go on vacation and I can enjoy myself and, and, and you know, uh, uh, buy a new car, buy a new car and so on. You're at the edge of the grave. You're buying a new car and, and you're going in, 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 in tourism and seeing the world now once uh, you're at the edge of the grave. Sufyan al-Thawri said, Man balagha sinna Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam falyattakhri li nafsihi kafana min sahib al-kafana. Sufyan al-Thawri mentioned that if a person reaches the age of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he passed, then he should uh, get for himself his death shroud. Yu sahib al-kafana. He should hold with himself his death. 63 years, it's not, a, it's not a joke. And if a person has reached the age of 70 years, he should not go to a place where he can go to a place where he can go to a place where he can go. A person you know, is 70 years spending going towards a destination, they have reached it. They have reached that place that they are headed towards. This is the, the situation we're in, the calamity that we're in. The youth uh, and the younger people are working hard day and night and are distracted by that work. And once they get older, then now they say this is the age of relaxation and rest and enjoyment. And worse than that is the situation of most of the 
of many of the youth. لا دنيا ولا أخرى خسر الدنيا ولا أخرى ذلك هو الخسران. Of the Muslim youth today. كسل و و نوم و غفلة. Laziness and sleep and heedlessness. خسر الدنيا ولا أخرى. They have lost this world and the next. ذلك هو الخسران. That is the great loss Allah refers to in the Quran. أتى يجهلي معدودتهم من جملة الأمراض فارضى دين الله تعالى قط ارضى يا مسلم بما قضاه الله تعالى. أو مسلم be pleased with this decree that Allah has decreed. أما إذا قال هلا لذاته ولا لصرام على ذات أما إذا كره الموت لا لذات الموت. ولا لأنه سينصرم وينقطع من اللذات الدنيا بل خوف نيته حسن خوف أن يقطعه عن أعمال الآخرة فهذا جيد But as for the one who does not fear death because of itself or he does not fear death because it's going to cut off his pleasures but rather he fears death because it's going to stop his opportunity at doing more deeds for the hereafter then this is not there's nothing wrong with that بالخوف قطعه عن استعداده بطاعة الله إلى معاده أو فوض الأمر إلى مولاه وصار مفوضا لا يتعالى يقول يا رب إن شئت أبقيتني وإن شئت أمتني فذان ممدحان محمودان. Then if a person has the the feeling that you know this they're afraid of death because that they will that they will have the opportunity to worship. Go away from them, and they're afraid to meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they don't know, they don't think they're ready yet, and they need to prepare more. Then these two fears of death, these are actually praiseworthy. في حديث أبي داود ما من أحد إلا ويندم يوم القيامة ما من أحد مطلقا إلا يندم يوم القيامة. حديث مention أبو داود that that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there's no one. Who accept that they will have regret? Everyone will have regret in the day of judgment. In كان سيء يندم أنه لم يتم وإن كان محسنا يندم أنه لم يزيد. Everybody was if a person was was evil, then or or was sinful, then they would be regretful that they did not repent. And if a person was righteous, then they would not then they would be regretful over that they did not increase in their worship. ذان من دحان محمود. والكره لا يبعد منك الدان مع أن الكره للشيء لا يبعد منك ما هو قريب في في قدر الله تعالى. And you remember also this disease of the heart of fearing death, fearing death and hating death. It's not gonna it's not gonna take death away from you. ذاكره يكرم بالقناعة وبنشاط قلبه للطاعة. ذاكر الموت دائما من يتذكر الموت دائما. وقد قلنا ماضيا وجعله للموت نصب العين جعله الموت ذاكره يكرم بالقناعة بأن يرضى بالقليل The one who often remembers death is blessed is blessed then with contentedness because they'll be contented with a little they're not going to be worried about too much about their worldly means وبنشاط قلبه للطاعة and he will find an energy towards doing good deeds and righteousness. Because he doesn't know when he's going to leave this world. So, you know, take advantage of the time. They'll know, they'll have this feeling to take advantage of the time. And they will find themselves constantly repenting, always returning returning to Allah, not staying too long in sin. يبتلى بثلاثة عدم القناعة وهذا هو المصاب به المسلم الآن تبنون بكل ريع آية تعبثون وتتخذون مصانع لعلكم تخلدون في كل الطرقات الحساسة والجبال المرتفعة يبني يبني بناء الخالدين وإنما مقامك فيها لو مكثت قليل لو طال قليل عدم القناعة وهذا هو الموجود if a person does not have you know this ناس المنية عكس المتذكر يبتلى بأضداد الثلاثة عدم القناعة. The person who has forgotten their death will have the opposite of those three things. The first one is that he will not have contentedness. He will not be contented. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that you build in every area, you know, like a sign, like pillars, huge buildings, factories, as if somebody, you know, in every faraway place. 
you're building, you know, uh, the building of a person who's going to live there forever. But uh, the poem mentions you, you build, like you're going to live there forever. You build the buildings of the eternal people, the everlasting people. While if you think about it, the time that you will spend there is very short. So uh, uh, a, a person will not be contented. They'll just want more and more and more and more and they'll never be satisfied if they do not remember their death, their mortality. And they will be afflicted with a, a, a lack of repentance. And a person who will feel like they'll have, you know, forever to repent, that they'll, the, the, there's no urgency for their repentance. And as far as doing good deeds, they'll be lazy towards those as well. This is what a tasawwuf is. Muhammad Habibullah ibn Umayya baqala jarrabtu wa tajribu kal murabbi allaysa nabi alli da'i al-qalbi ihlu kitab illahi bittadabburi wal-mawtu bid-dawami kulla al-a'suri hadha huwa al-tasawwuf al-nafu'u wa yashayna al-mawtu al-wara marfu'u qal jarrabtu ahamukha جربت محمد حبيب الله بن مياب حافظ المشرق والمغرب الشنقيطي الذي درس الحديث في فلسطين وفي بلاد الحجاز ومصر ونزلوا له عن منابر قال جربت والتجريب وكلم ربي ليس نافعا لداء القلب مثل كتاب الله that uh, Muhammad Habib Allah ibn Mayaba, the, uh, the Hafid of the, of the East and the West, the uh, teacher in Palestine and in Hijaz and so on, he, he uh, said that I have experienced and the experience, and the experience is, 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 is like a teacher. It's like a, it's like a teacher who, who brings up somebody and, and, and corrects them and, and so on. He said that uh, that there is. Uh, he said that there is nothing that is so beneficial to cure the diseases of the heart uh, uh, that is as beneficial as uh, reading the book and of Allah subhanahu wa taala with pondering over its meaning. He said, pairing that with. Uh, uh, remembering death and looking at death and remember uh, uh, he said this is the beneficial to sawwuf uh, uh, and he said and its and its status with the people of the past is, is elevated because it is built upon the deen, the, the rulings of this deen. He said, and besides it, uh, is, is, is a joke, it's just play. What is found today of this tasawwuf is just play. It's, it's not uh, it's not tasawwuf, it's not self purification. It's, it's adornment, it's, it's having you know uh, adorned gatherings and, and so on. And, you don't hear about death often in these gatherings. You hear about you know the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the place of the righteous and so on and, 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 and all of these things. Uh, uh, the proper prayer and purification and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and death uh, are not mentioned. Sadly, the, the gatherings of the so-called Sufis today are devoid of knowledge. It is as if knowledge is prohibited from them. وفر من عدوى معادي العلماء فر ابتعد من أن أن تصاب بعدوى من من هو يعادي العلماء. محمد الحسن هي سال. شيخ صوفي هو بنفسه. هي ذا الصوفي شيخ من الشيخ أو ذا صوفي هي سال. فر من عدوى معادي العلماء. هي سال run away. From the one who who uh, من, who من, من to be to be uh, 
uh, to catch the disease of a one who uh, uh, you know uh, hates the the scholars so this is a contagious disease be afraid of getting this contagious disease from the people who hate the scholars who hate the people of knowledge uh, Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i they mentioned that if the scholars, the righteous scholars, the scholars who are practicing the knowledge that they have are not the awliya of Allah, then Allah doesn't have any awliya. لكن محمد الحسن رحمه الله الله تعالى قال علامة الولي الآن الجهل عند هؤلاء. but uh, محمد الحسن he said that today that these people uh, they see that a person who uh, you know is that they see him as a wali uh, is ignorant. قال ترى الولاية تزيد بحسب عدم علم وتقال يا للعجب. he says you see the, the people uh, they, they view. Uh, they view the, the, a greater amount of uh, that this person is such a great wali and he becomes more a greater of a wali the more he's astray and disconnected from the, the traditional knowledge and and the, and the more uh, disconnected he is from from uh, piety and actually he said this is such a strange thing this is what is found today and, oh wow, this is such a great righteous wali this is a wali who doesn't pray properly, you know, who doesn't pray. This is, a per- this is a person who has no connection with, with the Lord of the world. This is the shaitan. That this person... Uh, 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 is, uh, this person is farther away from righteousness from the sky to the earth. وأقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصف وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وصحبه أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا على النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا على النار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا على النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ظلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ظلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم ربنا امنا بما انزلت ربنا امنا بما انزلت ربنا امنا بما انزلت واتبعنا الرسول فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين ربنا اننا سمعنا منادي ينادي للايمان ان امنوا بربكم فامنا 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 ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الابرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخرج النعال ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخرج النعال رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعائي ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا ظلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم يا رب بجاه نبيك المصطفى ورسولك المرتضى طهر قلوبنا من كل بصر يباعدنا 
عن مشاهدتك ومحبتك وامتناع على السنة والجماعة والشوق إلى لقائك يا جلال الإكرام اللهم أعطنا ما نريد وفق ما نريد اللهم إنا نسألك أن أن تهب لنا من الخير ما لا يعلم علمه إلا أنت وأن تصرف عنا من السوء ما لا يعلم علمه إلا أنت اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك أن تهب لنا من الخير ما لا يعلم علمه إلا أنت وأن تصرف عنا من السوء ما لا يعلم علمه إلا أنت اللهم اهدنا في من هديت اللهم اهدنا في من هديت اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا وكفنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من والت ولا يعز من عادت تباركت ربنا وتعالت اللهم يا عزيز وأعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر الله ما عدا الدين وصنع لقم الظالمين اللهم يا عزيز وأعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر الله ما عدا الدين وصنع لقم الظالمين اللهم يا عزيز وأعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر الله ما عدا الدين وصنع لقم الظالمين اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هم إلا فرشته ولا ض ولا إلا إلا هديته ولا جائلا إلا علمته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا عزبا إلا زوجته ولا فقيرا إلا أغنيته ولا مهوما إلا فرجت همه ولا حاجة من حوائش الدنيا ولا آخرة لك رضا ولنا في أصلاح إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تستجيب لنا دعوتنا وأن تعطينا رغبتنا وأن تغنينا عن من أغنيته عنا من خاطئك اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمورنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي لها منقلبنا اللهم ألف على الخير بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا وهدنا سبل السلام ونجنا من الظلمات إلى النور وجن من الفواحش والفتن ما ظهرنا ما بطن اللهم صل صلاة تامة وسلم سلاما تاما على نبي تفرج به الكرب وتزال به الهموم وتدرك به الرغائب وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الآمان اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى وصحبه وسلم في الأمات ونسوح